You know, Coach, it's so interesting to me. We've had this great relationship with Bowling Green going on 13 years now. It's an incredible place, great people, as, as you are finding out. Great president, uh, President Mazies and uh, Chris Kingston, great mm-hmm. AD, and great staff and uh, facilities and so forth. Good football players, um, winning program. You don't normally you don't normally walk no into a job like that, Coach. No you get the job because the facilities aren't so great. They've right. been losing. Things are down. Right. Uh, how does that make you feel? To, it's quite a compliment to walk into a program like that. I tell you, you're right, Tom. It doesn't happen. And and you know we he asked Cliff Kingsbury because he called me in his office. I think. Uh, he, and then Chris called our AD, and then he called Cliff. And Cliff calls me and he goes, man, who do you know in Ohio? <laughs> you know, and, and, and he was just, he goes, do you realize how successful yeah. BGSU has been yes. over the past few years? Do you yes. know what you have the opportunity to walk into? And, you know, that kind of set the tone for it. So, uh, again, uh, it's a tremendous opportunity, and we can't wait to get, to, as a staff, to get started. Coach, we're excited about having you here. Usually quarterbacks and people that have been proficient at that position, like yourself, when they become coaches, they're usually not screamers at their quarterbacks on game day. They're no. more conversational because you understand right. you've got a lot of things no going doubt. on at the quarterback. And you don't need somebody grabbing you by the face mask and screaming and yelling at you at particular times. Are you more of a conversational guy no, for no your doubt. QB? I, the, same, the same way I am with the quarterback, the same way I am is with our football team. Yeah. As, as, a, as a head coach, my, um, our, my approach and the approach of our staff is we want to make uh, – our practices and our, our off season as as adverse as we possibly can. Right. We want to put as much pressure on them as we can because when we get to game night, Saturday afternoon, Saturday Saturday night, whatever it might be, you got to be great teachers. You know what I mean? They got to be great students because you know I've got this pet peeve. You sometimes you look on the sidelines, you see this guy just ripping the kid. You know, you right. know, and things of that nature. And all you're saying to me is that I didn't get this kid ready to play. And you're making a great and point, you know, and you're making an excuse and letting everybody stand. So it's not my fault. Not a believer in that. Well, it's a great you know, point, so, coach. Um, you know, and what good does it do at that point? No, it, it's, 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 it's too late. Law <laughs> it's law of diminishing returns at that it's, point. It's, yeah. it's nothing to get upset about. You better grab him by hug him on the next yeah. day, man. We, let's get out of this thing together right. and let's figure out how to do it. Right, and, right, you know, right. and, uh, you know, uh, you know, we've always been decent at, at playing, you know, making second half adjustments and, and going mm-hmm. on and being a good second half team. So I think that has a lot to do with it. Just the ability to communicate and stay even killed on Lebanon Hill, on, uh, even killed on game day. Coach, your Texas Tech offense, you know, incredible. I mean, always year in, year out, one of the best in the country. Mm-hmm. I think you were, you know, statistically second this year, like 540 yards total yeah. offense. Uh, you know, I think you were rushing for 200 a game. But but here's what gets me about what you did. Usually when it's a air raid offense and right. you're going up top, the run is an afterthought. Right. And here you at a back, uh, Mr. Washington, I believe I, I have that right. Right. One year, a thousand. Next year was it fourteen hundred? Right at fourteen ninety eight. Yeah. Fourteen. Right at okay. Yeah. In an air raid offense, right. how the heck are you doing that, Coach? Because that most times it doesn't work that way. That's incredible right. balance. Right. No doubt. And again, um, when you talk about balance, we're talking about taking what the defense gives us. Right. And and, and being consistent with that, you know. And sometimes as offensive coordinators, that's that's tough to do. We want to score, and we want to score now. Yeah. Uh, we can run 10, 10, 15, throw it, you know, instead of, okay, they're giving us a run, let's run it, let's run it, let's run it, and let's run it again. I thought that uh, um, uh, Coach Kingsbury and I thought that our quarterback did a great job of when the box was light, they continue to handle the ball, hand the ball off. Uh, and the second thing in that is we really, uh, we made a conscious effort uh, going into spring ball two years ago and, and even through fall camp to, to, to be a physical football team. You know what I mean, and, and have the mindset that a four-yard run is just as if it's run and it's finished the right way, can you be just as impactful as a fifty-yard pass? The, the physical part of it, you know, that that really is a, such a salient point to me, Coach, because I've been in offenses where we threw it all over, we threw it coming off the bus, you know, which mm-hmm. I love, you know, that's great. But I learned, you know, I, I really learned a lot. I learned that there are times in a game, even though I, I would like to throw it a hundred times, there are times in a game where you must physically run the football. No to protect your guys on defense yes. that we're going to you know we're going to move the chains and we're right. going to we're going to physically come at you give those guys a break and show the guys as you just said on the other side of the line that hey hey we can play hardball too and, and we're not just a finesse team and I learned you know I learned a lot of hard lessons on that that right. you know you you got to be able to do that right no doubt it, it makes an unbelievable difference just just in the, the demeanor of your football team yeah. you know what I mean just to, just to have that that approach about it and that ability to do about it you're right it does change the defense you know, because because now you know these, these, we're, right, we're a spread offense, and that's what we do. 
Now, and if you're going to play six in the box, that means you can't be too high up top. Right. We've got a chance to make plays. Right. So, to me, the key to these systems is when the box is light, you have to be, you can't be good at it. You know, you, you have to be at dominant. Yeah, One of the things that we took the most pride in it, I mean, you look at the number of carries, it may not have been as many as some of the other schools yeah. out there. Um, but you look at the yards per carry. I mean, I think it, very rarely do you have a kid averaging 6.87 yards every time he touches the football, college football. Those I are mean, Jim Brown numbers. I mean, uh, <laughs> you know, and that comes back, and that starts up front. They, every time we called a run, they took it personally. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they, and they wanted to finish each and every time. So we'll develop that same type of uh, mindset here. Coach, we you two quarterbacks sitting here. We haven't talked defense. Right. What what kind of style are you comfortable with? Is it a 4-3? Is it attacking defense? Uh, we'll be multiple. We'll base out of a four down, but we'll, we'll have the ability to, to bring some three down pressures and things of that nature. Um, uh, Coach Eliano is coming from, to us from UTSA. Uh, an interesting fact here, I actually coached Perry uh, in 1995 when I took my first job at Clean Ellison. It was no kidding. An unbelievable safety for us, and he went on and had a That's great That's a good experience when you have one of your guys that you've well, coached or taught. And they come back and work well, with you. No, that, that's no doubt. He he's he knows what I'm about. Yeah. You know what I mean. He knows it's a comfort level, right? right. He knows the, the style in which I want to see these kids play with. He knows how I, I talk to him. He knows he's been around it. I mean, the lack of uh, my wife hates when I say this, but we drink from the same bathwater. Yeah. yeah you know, all right. So that's uh, a good analogy. Yeah. 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 You know, uh, and not only that, he's a good coach and, and he's a better person. But that makes it easier on you, is you don't have to. You don't have to convince him that how you do it is the right, right. way. You know, sometimes you bring people right. in and you got to convince them, yeah. and he's already in. No, no doubt. I, now, now, don't get me wrong. I believe in empowering our coaches. I mean, he, it's his show, and, and we're going to do what – but you're right. But the, the key to me is building a culture, and I'm not having to, have to sell anybody on here's – how we're going to treat the kids. You know, we talk about making that work week as its versus we possibly can on game day. You better be a great teacher. He understands that. He gets that, and that same message he will deliver to our defensive staff, and he'll get that message across to our players. And I think that uh, just this, this, that consistency uh, is key. I've never seen with a new head coach hire the same thing come up every time from everybody that I researched that talked mm -hmm. about you, and it's an incredible compliment. The first thing they said was character. Mm -hmm. They said, you know, Mike has incredible character. And A, that's an amazing compliment yes, in today, you know, today's society. Uh, secondly, Coach, where where did you where was the foundation of this tremendous character you have? And we were talking a little bit about your mom off right. air. Was it your mom? Was it you know, other teachers and coaches? Because that's the reputation you have is an incredible character. Well, I, I tell you what. First of all, thank you, and I, I'm extremely humbled uh, uh, by those comments. But uh, none of the words. That, that, that you know the way I carry myself this that or the other it's it's not me um, again I've had two great parents that, right. that, that have helped uh, get me to understand what it meant to be a good person uh, probably the greatest mentor that I've had in, in my uh, coaching career uh, was a gentleman by the name of D.W. Rutledge he was head coach of Converse Judson he's legendary coach the president of the Texas High School Coaches Association Texas High School Coaches Association. He's won six or seven state championships. But in the early 90s, he wrote a curriculum called Coaching to Change Lives. And while we were a great football team and we won a ton of games, uh, every day it was a message about being a better man and a better person. And his simple philosophy was that good people make good football players. You know, uh, Coach, I'll tell you what, uh, the enthusiasm, the excitement, the offense, uh, what you're bringing to Bowling Green, uh, you got me fired up, Coach. I've got about three weeks of eligibility I got left, you. Yes, and sir. I'm one dry piece of toast off a of 400. <laughs> so I think I could give you, a, you know, Let's I go. could plug a hole for a little while or something. But uh, Coach, you're going to be super successful here, and uh, we are uh, thrilled with the opportunity to cover uh, the new football season. Tom, up with Coach James. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, you. Coach. Thanks so much. Tom Cole for Buckeye Cable and BCSN.